Hey everybody, so something happened just this last Tuesday, I think everybody's kind of aware of it, and I thought we should discuss it, but relax, I'm not going, I'm going to stay in my lane, uh, this is going to still be comic books, but we are going to talk about politics and comics just for a minute, because I kind of feel like the industry is maybe hitting another one of those inflection points, uh, those moments where you can turn right or left, one will take you to prosperity and happiness and sales, and the other one will take you to certain doom. And I feel like we've been here before, so let's see if we can avoid some of the pitfalls of the past. And hopefully if there's any comic creators that maybe happen upon this channel or happen upon this video, uh, you can gleam a little bit of insight and learn a little bit of lessons from history as we move forward in the next political season. So politics and comics have been around in one form or another for a very long time. I mean, the original, think of the original Captain America punching Adolf Hitler cover. That was a direct taken from the headlines of current events comic books, comic book cover. But there was, there's a difference between having the real world reflected in your book through maybe putting a real life political figure in there or a real life uh something from the news taken directly from the headlines and interjecting in your comic to give your world a little bit more of a relatable feel to make it look more like the world we live in now or to maybe give the stakes a little bit more gravity that we're seeing some real world figures interacting with this fictional situation those are all good and can be used to very strong dramatic effect where this gets rough is when an agenda starts poking its way into the adventures of our superheroes and you cross into that world of pandering and you cross into that world of the creators using the book as a bullhorn to shout their political views directly into the faces of their readers. And if there's one thing that we can glean from this election is that at least half, if not more than half of this entire country is going to disagree with you no matter which side of that political fence that you fall on. So as you're putting your crap, your book out there, your end product, know that if you're going to interject your own political worldview into it in such a jarring and ham-fisted way that you've already cut your potential audience in half and then whatever successful sales numbers you're going to derive is going to be taken from that existing very much reduced customer base. So I, I can't caution enough that one particular lesson that we learned in 2016. When 2016 happened, we saw prominent creators drummed out of the industry because they were openly conservative or they had voted for Donald Trump. We saw this the shadow of uh, comics gate rise from that. We saw the online comics uh, craze born from that. And really all it did, while those things, whether you like them or not, are substantial, they still splintered your comic book industry. And in when you're in a print media part of the market, something that's already dying, the last thing you can afford to do is fragment your audience even further. So that resulted in reduced sales, canceled titles, and basically people people having to choose sides in this weird war of fictional characters it was a bizarre time 20, the original trump administration and what, based on some of the reactions i'm seeing from prominent comic creators online right now um, it looks like they're willing to walk that road again and i'm here to caution you let's wait and maybe try to keep our sanity and walk through his business as usual rather than falling into that certain derangement syndrome. Uh, let's look at this sales chart here. Now there's a million sales charts you can find. Uh, hopefully you find a reputable one, but they all look about the same. I wanted to start in the 90s because that's when I started my love for comic books. And that's when I remember the comic book industry just absolutely thriving. And then the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s came along. And what originally caused that dip in comic book sales was there was a moment in time when people thought that first issues of comic books were going to send their kids to college and that variant covers were going to pay for your new house and those numbers never really materialized and so uh the comic boom kind of kind of ended as this weird group of investors pulled their money out of the comic industry after they finally learned that comic books are not as value are not more valuable than long-term stock purchases or putting your money in gold like people were thinking. So they, they did kind of find a renaissance in the early 2000s and then 2010s. As you can see in this chart, around 2005, they really start spiking and heading back upward. 
And then they start going back down right around the time Obama got elected. And one of the reasons I, I, be, I believe, not the only factor, but one of the factors is that's the first time I can remember a political figure directly being thrown into the narrative and directly being painted in, in the light of, you know, always the good guy. And one comic books were always kind of seen as a, uh, a voice that was kind of a challenge authority. That was part of the whole idea of it. So there was a bit of, of sense of pandering, having, you know, Barack Obama fist bumping, uh, Spider-Man and assembling a young blood team and all the other things they had him doing. Um, and again, you have to remember when you're doing that, not everybody voted for Barack Obama. So not everybody was happy to see him palling around with their favorite superhero. So you alienated some you alienated some of your audience then. And that's really when agenda started making its way more and more into the fabric of comics. And then come around 20, you know, 2016, that's when it really just hit the fan. That's when uh, Trump was elected. That's when everything went to garbage. Uh, the industry split itself in half. And you do see a few years here where it did go well. But oftentimes these big spikes uh, were due either to a, a major comic book event like a, a, a reboot. Uh, if you remember around 2016, that's also around the time of the great DC reboot, which, reboot, which did have you know, pretty high sales. Uh, you also had the rise of the MCU, which was bringing a lot of attention onto comic books, but look at just the following years. Not only do they drop off dramatically, they drop off to numbers lower than the previous years. So what that meant was what, for whatever reason, the comic industry was doing something right to bring, bring in either bring in new readers or bring in readers back that they had lost with maybe a sense of curiosity or optimism for what the industry was starting to do now but then once they got in there and they saw the end product that was being offered up, they didn't stick around. They came in they bought because of the initial thrill of whatever the event was or the, whatever the circumstance was. Then they saw what the comic industry was and they walked right back away. And not only did they walk back away, but a bunch of existing readers went along with them because the numbers in 2015, then 2016 go way up and then 2017 is lower than 2015. So we've been bleeding readers for quite a while. And this is the heart of identity politics being injected into comic books, of agenda being injected into comic books, the message being injected into comic books, and really people being asked to choose a side. You've got the rise of comics gate in this time. You've got the rise of crowdfunded comic books and all these creators that were drummed out and blacklisted from the comics industry are now just going and doing it on their own. And they're taking the major studio dollars or uh, studios money and sales with them as they go. That was a reality of what was going on. And all of this because we had this, this moment that fractured not only the industry, but the audience and the professionals and everybody. And that's because poli politics are a decisive thing. There's a reason we don't talk about it at Thanksgiving dinner. They don't go, they don't end well. They cause arguments. They cause division. They cause people to end friendships, even to end marriages. It, it's crazy what politics does to the American mind right now. And now more than ever is why we need that route of escapism. We need to be able to pick up a comic book and everybody's rooting for the same character. When we pick up a Batman comic, everybody's rooting for Batman. There's not somebody who's going to pick up that Batman comic and say, well, you know, really Penguin is right. So I'm going to hope that he wins in this situation. No, uh, same with every superhero. That's the point of the superhero comic is we like the heroes. We boo and hiss the villains. Uh, we want to, we want to see them challenge. We want to see uh, the world in peril from something other than the world, that the things that are putting our real world in peril, you know, and, you know, remember the humor in comic books? Remember the fun? Remember when all that stuff was there? Identity politics takes all of that out. It, it drains the room of oxygen. It's It just brings everything down. It's the guy that's invited to the party that just kills the vibe. That's what politics is in comics. And I'm very afraid that with 
Donald Trump about to be sworn in for another four years that we're in for another four years of people using the comic book industry to tell us exactly how stupid we were for voting for him, how evil he is and all of his policies are in the Oval Office and how the world is going to end because the policies of Donald Trump are happening in the Marvel Universe. And I really don't care to read that story. I'm going to watch that story unfold one way or another in real life every time I turn on the news or every time somebody posts on social media or every time I get an alert from a news site. I'm going to be bombarded with that all of those times. If I'm going to pick up a comic book, I want to see the Joker threatening Gotham City. I want to see Dr. Octopus with his eight arms giving Spider-Man a run for his money. I want to see, you know, aliens or monsters or demons or cyborgs or whatever it is, anything threatening the world that isn't global warming, climate change, human rights, all of this stuff. I get that enough in the real world. I just want fun in my world of comic books. So that's kind of my message here uh, as we watch another political season end and a new one begin. Let's just try our best to keep the politics out of our capes and let's keep the message out of our comic books. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and find a comic book where some crazy crap is happening that has nothing to do with this election season that we're just getting through the end of. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a more conversational type of tone than my usual ones. Uh, maybe I'll do more like this. I know I've been gone for a while, and it's easy to just be able to sit and talk about something in my head uh, you know, without having to do a, a totally prepared slideshow and everything else for it. So who knows? Maybe that'll hopefully get me to post a little bit more. But I really hope you enjoyed this one. And I want to know what you guys think about politics and comics. Is it something that you think belongs there? Is it something that you enjoy? Or are you like me and just say, I want comic books to be comic books. I want politicians to be politicians. Talk about that in the comments below. While you're down there, do all the usual stuff. Like, subscribe to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you. Um, and that's really it. I will talk to you guys on the next one. See you then. Bye.